Chapter 31 Divorce You are listening at NovelFull.audio Since you hate me so much, quit talking nonsense. Take out the IOUs. Sun Ishii snorted coldly when he heard that. He turned around to take them out. Madam Sun couldn't even stand properly. Back then when they had drawn lots as to who would get the family's resources to continue studying, sure enough, Yiming had been the lucky one. Was she really so unfair back then? Sun Ishii took out the IOUs. Sun Yiming counted the money to pay off the debt. He took the IOUs and left. He didn't even look back. Madam Sun was shouting at him from behind, but he pretended not to hear her. Sun Ishii had a few noxious words to say, but these were nothing but a gust of wind to Yiming. When he returned home, he looked at the lock on the door. For a moment, he had mixed feelings. Sorrow rose in his heart. He sat at the door and thought for a long time. If he hadn't had that dream, then now he wouldn't be as willing to part ways with Han Xiao. But he had that dream. In the dream, his wife was educated, gentle, and virtuous. His future was bright, and he was surrounded by beautiful concubines. His children were filial and lovely. Compared to these three daughters who saw him as an enemy, his heart was naturally biased. Of course, he was also afraid of falling down the same path as before. Han Xiao and her daughter were sold into prostitution. He sighed. He would never admit that he wanted to continue climbing up the social ladder, nor would he admit that he was tired of living at this moment. He was certain that he had seen that inexplicable memory. His life could turn out to be even more glorious than in the dream. Moreover, Han Xiao wanted to divorce him, and she and their daughters had already separated from him. They wouldn't live a good life with him, so he didn't want to force them. He didn't know what else was in the courtyard, nor did he want to go see. He only wanted to find Han Xiao and write the letter of divorce. From then on, the two would have nothing to do with each other. He returned the silver to shopkeeper Xia and saved up some money for the road. Then, he left Ningi town to earn his future. At that moment, Sun Yiming couldn't wait any longer. He stood up and knocked on Heng's door. Who is it? Elder brother Heng opened the door. Is Heng Yi at home? Sun Yiming asked. Yes. Sun Yiming explained the purpose of his visit. He wanted to ask Heng Yi to accompany him on the night journey. He wanted to go to Shishan village. When Heng Yi was called out, his expression was very dark. When he learned that he wanted to go to Shishan village, he was stunned for a moment. All right, he agreed. Sun Yiming could not possibly walk to Shishan village on his own. Furthermore, he had some money, so he went out with Heng Yi to look for a carriage to hire. When the coachman heard that he was going to visit Han Xiao in Shishan village, he was very surprised. He asked carefully, Mr. Sun, are you going to Shishan village to pick someone up? No, I'm going to divorce Han Xiao. Dot. Dot. Hang Yi and the coachman were stunned. Dot Hang Yi touched his nose and felt an inexplicable feeling. It was strange. Since things between Han Xiao and me have gotten this nasty, there's no way for us to get back together. We had better go our separate ways. From now on, it doesn't matter if she or I marry someone else. Dot. Hang Yi did not speak. Who could even know what he was thinking? On the way, the coachman chatted with Sun Yiming casually to prevent himself from falling asleep. It was not easy to travel at night, so the carriage moved very, very slowly. When they reached Shishan village, the sky had just begun to dawn. Someone from the Han family had already gotten up to boil water for breakfast. Sun Yiming went forward to knock on the door. Behind him were Hang Yi and the coachman. Sun Yiming was afraid that if he showed up at the Han house all alone, he would be beaten up until half of his body was paralyzed, so he brought Hang Yi to bolster his courage. Someone's here. The door opened. Han Yuan looked at Sun Yiming. She wanted to curse at him, but in the end, she held it in. 
Sun Yiming bowed and said, Mother dot in dot law, I'm looking for Chiao to discuss the divorce. You. Come in. Han Yuan let Sun Yiming, Hang Yi, and the carriage enter the courtyard while she went to wake them up. Very quickly, the Han family quickly made themselves up and sat with Sun Yiming in the central room. Then, someone went to invite the clan leader and the village officials. They also invited their uncles over. Sun Yiming was actually very nervous. He looked at Han Xiao. Xiao, I want to talk to you alone first. Okay. Han Xiao was not afraid that Sun Yiming would hit her. They were in the Han house, now. If Sun Yiming hit her, he would more or less be committing suicide, showing that he'd grown tired of living and was looking for an easy way out. When the two of them walked out of the courtyard, Han Xiao also saw Hang Yi and the coachman. Dot. She was extremely surprised. Why was he here? Hang Yi glanced at her, then quickly looked away. Sun Yiming was completely unaware of what was going on between the two of them. He followed Han Xiao to the stone at the corner of the courtyard. Han Xiao calmly walked over. She showed no trace of panic, shock or fear when Sun Yiming told her he wanted to divorce her. Did you also have a dream? Sun Yiming asked. Ha! Huh. Han Xiao looked at Sun Yiming without saying a word. Her enigmatic look made Sun Yiming unable to figure it out. Do you really want to do this? Sun Yiming asked. Yes. It was a resounding yes. She had no intention of going back on her words. After the divorce, the three children. Sun Yiming couldn't say anything about taking the three children away. The three children belong to me. Their surname will be Han from now on. I object, Sun Yiming retorted vehemently. What right do you have to object? Have you raised them for a day? Hugged them once. Bought them candy once. Bought them snacks once. Sun Yiming, I'm not trying to criticize you, but you are such a failure as a human being. You let your own mother and brother scheme against you, yet you are still unaware of it. You are still smug and complacent. To be honest, divorce is the best choice for both of us. If you can start a new life with me after divorce, you can also work hard without any worries. Listen to my advice and leave Ningi town. Leave your parents and your family. Perhaps then you can become a decent human being. Dot. Sun Yiming's eyes widened. Now, he was almost certain that Han Xiao had the same dream. Otherwise, why would she say something like that? He took three deep breaths. Then let's divorce. But the three children cannot change their surnames. I'm sorry for what I've done to you. I'm unworthy of being a husband and a father. As long as you promise not to change their surnames or change their names, I'm willing to never come and disturb them from now on. Regardless of whether you marry again or how well they are doing, I swear, and if I go back on my word, then I will not die a good death. I will be homeless from then on, and I will not die a good death. Dot. Hearing that, Han Xiao looked at Sun Yiming seriously. His face was badly bruised, but it betrayed nothing. His eyes were unusually clear. All right. It is what it is. All she wanted was for the Sun family not to disturb her. Sun Yiming took out his wallet, opened it, and took out five tails of silver. He handed them to Han Xiao. This is my last compensation. Let that show that I have a conscience, at least a guilty conscience. Xiao, I'm sorry. I have broken my promise and treated you badly. After today's divorce, we will never see each other again. With these five tales of silver and the previous ones, your lives will be much better. Thank you, I'll accept it. Han Xiao accepted the silver without hesitation. Sun Yiming owed her. She wasn't a fool. The divorce was actually not that difficult. When they got married, they had never registered it with the government. All that had happened was that the head of the Han clan, the head of the Shishan village, as well as the regional chief had come over. 
Han Xiao's elder and son Yiming personally wrote the divorce letter. The bond between husband and wife is forged over three past lives. Hence they are matched for this life. If they are not meant to be together, they will be enemies, so they will stand apart from each other. Since you have two different hearts, it is too difficult for you to be united. Soon, you will be together with your relatives, and each of you will return to your original path. I hope that after your wife leaves you, she will comb her temples again, sweep her beautiful eyebrows, and cleverly take on a graceful posture, then she will be chosen to serve the empress. With one parting, two widths apart, each of you will be happy. Han Xiao didn't recognize most of the traditional characters, but when she read what little she could, she almost laughed out loud. Wasn't this plagiarism? It would be more accurate to say that all letters of divorce followed the same model. Chapter 32 Life is not easy you are listening at novelfull.audio. However, in accordance with Han Xiao's request, apart from writing the letter of divorce, Sun Yiming also wrote a guarantee that he would not disturb Han Xiao and her daughters from now on, and that the members of the Sun family could not use any excuse or reason to ask the four of them to do anything for the Sun family. He also wrote a document stating that he and the Sun family no longer had any relation of kinship with the three daughters. That cut off all possible paths of retreat. He had written the letter of divorce and the letter of guarantee in duplicate. As long as he took it to the Sun family and let the Sun family's patriarch and elders see it, this matter would be considered a success. The two of them signed the document Sun Yiming's handwriting was regular and pleasing to the eye. Han Xiao's handwriting was crooked and unsightly. Thus the matter of the divorce was settled. Sun Yiming left in a hurry. He was afraid that he would be beaten up if he stayed any longer. When he left, he realized that not a single person from the Han family saw him out. Neither Han Xiao, nor his three daughters. He understood completely. As a father and husband, he had failed miserably. After getting into the carriage, he said tiredly, let's go. Hang Yi wanted to go into the mountains to hunt. When Han Xiao invited him to have breakfast, he didn't refuse. Dot. However, he stole a few glances at the beaming Han Xiao. Dot. Was getting a divorce really that happy? On second thought, it was indeed something worth being happy about. After eating breakfast, Hang Yi bade them farewell and left. But Han Xiao called out to him. Hang Yi. Hang Yi's heart began to race. Beneath his calm and collected face, no one knew what kind of emotions could be lurking. Ha! Huh. Can you bring the three of us with you when you go hunting in the mountains? Dot. Hang Yi looked at Han Xiao and the two girls behind her. Or, perhaps you could give us some pointers on where we can hunt pheasants or collect wild fruits. I won't be able to, unfortunately, Hang Yi said coldly. He turned to leave. He didn't feel like doing so would be right. After thinking for a moment, he said coldly, I can sell you a few pheasants for ten cash each. Han Xiao was ecstatic when she heard that. For the record, it cost fifty coins to buy a home.raised chicken. Okay. After agreeing, Han Xiao felt that this wasn't fair to him. Buying a chicken from him for that cheap more or less amounted to bullying him. However, Heng Yi had already walked a ways away, not giving her a chance to speak at all. Dot. Han Xiao pursed her lips. She turned around and returned to the courtyard. Their son Xiu and son Yi were helping to sweep the floor. A few of the younger ones went to the backyard to feed the chickens. In the Han family, there were no lazy people. Han Xiao had the children do that work while she went off to help with some other work. However, as soon as she did, she was chased away by her uncle. The men here have everything taken care of. Go on home. Han Xiao didn't dare to talk back to her elders. Moreover, that day there were a few more cousins who had come out to help. For that she was especially touched. All this help and support from her family. Still, she felt a little guilty. After all, she was both Han Xiao and not Han Xiao. 
When she got back home, Han Xiao summoned Sun Xiao and Sun Yi. She was planning to go to the back mountain. Auntie, I'll go with you. Han Yuan Yuan grabbed a scythe. She was raising three pigs at home, so she needed a lot of grass to feed them. Although she was doted on, she still had to do housework, such as gather grass for the pigs. Sure. Sun Ku stayed at home to play with her little cousin, Xiao Hu. The children went crazy as soon as they locked up the courtyard. In July, morning is the coolest time of the day. As the sun came out, it would gradually get hotter. After entering the mountain, Han Xiao's first task was to find mushrooms. Then, she would dig up some herbs, pick up some naturally dried wood, and dig up some dry pine needles that could be used to start a fire. Mother, can this mushroom be eaten? Sun Xiao asked, holding a red mushroom. Han Xiao took a look. If the mushroom is too beautiful, it means that it's poisonous. It's not edible. Throw it away. Okay. By the time it was noon, they had already gathered a massive amount of stuff. She gathered a backpack's worth of mushrooms, dug up three clusters of orchids along with a few piles of dry pine needles, two baskets of dried hay, a small bag of ground eggplants, and even a stalk of black nightshade. Han Xiao's initial estimate was that the withered grass, when cleaned and dried in the sun, would sell for more than 10 coins, and that the ground eggplant would sell for at most 4 or 5 coins. The nightshade might be higher, but she wasn't sure. It was good to be able to sell it for some money. She knew that no matter what time it was, the road to success was a long one. Being down dot to dot earth was the best thing to do. Moreover, she had to be even more cautious with her three children. Sun Yiming, that idiot, had given her five tails of silver, which more or less solved her most urgent problem. She hadn't even been completely sure about what the sons were planning, so how did Sun Yiming suddenly figure it out? Mom, look, there's a crab. Sun Yi pointed at the stream. Han Xiao took a look and found that, indeed, there was a crab. She put down the basket, took off her cloth shoes, rolled up her pants, and went to catch the crab. She was fast and steady, and caught the crab in an instant. Wow! The three little girls looked at her and were immediately delighted. Let's go home now. In the afternoon we'll come catch more crabs. All right. Han Xiao thought that if she was lucky, she could catch more crabs in the afternoon and cook them for dinner. They returned home. Han Yuan didn't say much when she saw that they had gathered summer grass, eggplant, and black nightshade. She quietly helped to fetch water for Han Xiao to wash the summer grass and put it on the drying mat. While washing, Han Xiao picked out all the weeds and dried leaves. The older and younger children all came over to help. Because they still had to work that afternoon, they cooked coarse grain porridge and wodu for lunch. Although the family had land, they couldn't just eat all the grain. After taxes were paid, they would have to sell some for money. So they planted a lot of sorghum and corn. After eating corn and sorghum wodu, you would already be hungry again. Basically, this was what every family ate for lunch. When the sweet potatoes came out, they would eat the sweet potatoes. They would keep the corn and sorghum and eat them the next year. In order to make a living, the farmers would always plan ahead and store away the grain that could be stored. They could not keep it for too long, so they ate it quickly. Do you plan to get some herbs to sell in the future? Asked Han Yuan. Han Xiao nodded. Yes. I'll get some herbs from the mountains and raise some chickens and ducks. That's good, too. Han Yuan nodded. She then asked Han Xiao, are you going to get married again? Dot. Han Xiao was stunned. After thinking carefully, she said, if I meet a suitable man, whom the children don't object to, I'll marry again. However, even if she married again, she wouldn't lead a confused life like she had before. She wouldn't let anyone bully her. Then, when someone comes to our house to inquire, I won't reject them. If that happens, let's have a look at him. Perhaps he could be suitable. 
Han Xiao didn't want to overdo it. Well, I want to make sure he is financially stable and able to earn money to support the family. I'm not going to support him with the money I earn. Of course. Han Yuan smiled. The most important point was that the family didn't need so many people. The fewer the mouths to feed, the better. More people only meant more disputes. Han Xiao was very good looking. It wouldn't be particularly difficult for her to find another husband. But this time, she had to keep her eyes open and choose a reliable one. During the meal, Han Xiao said that she was taking the children out to catch crabs in the afternoon. The children instantly became excited. Even Daeong and Dahu wanted to stop working and go with them to catch crabs and fish. Dot back in Ningi town, Sun Yiming first went to the Sun clan leader's house and told him about his divorce with Han Xiao. The Sun clan leader looked at him and was silent for a long time. Finally, he had a few words to say, I once thought that you would have a bright future. I never imagined one day you would ruin yourself like this. Although Han Xiao didn't come from a prominent background, after marrying you, she was filial to their parents. In law, took care of the household chores and raised their children. Her treatment of you was beyond reproach. You were exceptionally blessed. You are not the first child of our son family, and you will not be the last. However, you are the first to bring shame to our family. Beating your wife, drinking too much, all sorts of depravity. The Sun Clan leader waved his hand. You can go. Go, get out of here. Out of sight, out of mind. He was too lazy to say anything. When Sun Yiming returned to the carriage, he felt guilty and blamed himself. He swore that he would make a name for himself. Chapter 33 Expert conversationalist you are listening at novelfull.audio when Hang Yi came down from the mountain, he was carrying a dozen pheasants and a wild boar. The people who saw him on the way were extremely envious. Pheasants, wild boars, these were all very good catches. When he got back, he saw Han Xiao taking the children out to catch crabs and fish by the stream. There were at least twenty to thirty children with her. As though she were the king of children, she told them to surround the gap and chase the fish from the top. There was a backpack placed at the gap to put the fish into. Every time she made a trip down to the stream, she would always come back with no less than one or two caddies of small fish. The children were even more excited. They made several gaps and filled the buckets almost to the brim. They didn't know fishing could be done this way. Aunt Xiao is really smart. The Han family had many boys and girls. Han Xiao's cousin had about ten of them. When the other children in the village saw this, they followed suit. Although the fish soup was a little fishy, it was still meat. That wasn't something they could eat often. When Han Xiao saw Hang Yi, she quickly dried up and put on her cloth shoes. Hang Yi carried the pheasants and wild boars over. The bountiful harvest was really eye-dot catching. Han Xiao was also envious. How many pheasants do you want? Hang Yi asked. Five. Hang Yi acknowledged, can you carry them? If not, I'll take them to your house. Could you carry them, please? Han Xiao was about to go home. She summoned her children to go home with her. Without an adult, she was afraid that the children would go to the deep pool and fall in by accident. Are you selling these fish? Hang Yi asked. Dot. Han Xiao looked at the bucket. With such small fish, besides making fish soup, the only other thing you can do with them is to fry them. Fried fish was very delicious. She thought the children wouldn't want to sell them, but instead, they all hurriedly shouted back, sell them, sell them. I'll buy them all. Han Xiao was extremely surprised. Why do you want to buy so many small fish? I want to send them to a restaurant in the county capital, Hang Yi said, adding, I opened a restaurant with someone there. Hang Yi didn't understand why he wanted to talk to Han Xiao about the restaurant. But later, he would come to realize that, ever since Han Xiao had smiled at him, 
he had begun to have improper thoughts about her. Now, he was taking the chance to show Han Xiao how he can benefit her. He didn't dare to speak rashly. He wanted to test whether Han Xiao would be interested in him. He had never liked anyone, nor had he spoken much to any woman. If that's the case, then how do you plan to cook these small fish? They add up to several caddies. Dot. Hung Yi was troubled. Another reason Han Xiao wanted to sell the fish was to reward the children's afternoon labor. She suggested, you can get the chef to clean up the small fish and fry them. Can you come along? I can calculate how much you are owed. When Hang Yi said this, his heart began to pound. Only he knew how nervous he was. I'll go back and discuss it with my family. Han Xiao did not agree or reject immediately. She brought Hang Yi home and the children followed behind with buckets. The long string of children was really interesting. As soon as she learned that Han Xiao wanted to buy five pheasants, Han Yuan objected. Mother, it's cheap. No matter how cheap it is, you're not allowed to buy it. You can't use that tiny bit of money recklessly. Your uncle and the others don't lack any pheasants. Father Han did not agree either. Uncle Yao, who had followed Han Xiao to watch the show, also objected to Han Xiao buying pheasants. But what he was more interested in was Han Xiao going to the county capital. Why don't I go with Xiao? If Xiao went to the county town and used her culinary skills to earn a living, then the four of them would not have to worry about their livelihood. Yeah, if you could do that, that'd be great, Father Han said. We're brothers, there's no need to be so polite. Uncle Yao immediately went home to pack up and change into clean clothes. Hang Yi started weighing the fish. They would sell for five cash per caddy. Since one caddy amounted to quite a lot of little fish, they also prepared a big bucket. Hang Yi asked De Shang to summon Bai Cha, who was standing outside at the fork in the road with the stuff gathered in the wilderness. Bai Cha's daily job was to fetch goods from the wilderness and bring some food for Hang Yi. He was smart and steady. Everyone helped to load the wooden bucket onto the carriage. They then poured water in the bucket and put the fish in. Han Xiao wanted to go to the county capital, so she tidied herself up. She told Sun Xiu, Sun Yi, and Sun Ku to behave while at their grandfather's house and not to run around. Mother, I will be good. Sun Ku was obedient and cute. Han Xiao kissed her on the cheek. I'll buy you some silk flowers while I'm out. Okay. Sun Ku was overjoyed. She smiled until her eyes curved. She had only heard of silk flowers, but had never seen one before. Her nieces also looked at Han Xiao. Han Xiao smiled and said, I'll buy some for you too. The girls instantly became happy. They watched helplessly as Han Xiao sat in the carriage, which was soon setting off for the county capital. Because the carriage was only so big, it was already filled with pheasants, wild boars and a large bucket. Han Xiao sat beside the driver's seat, so Heng Yi and Uncle Yao could only walk. However, they were all farmers, so walking was nothing to them. Moreover, the two of them were very fast. Uncle Yao asked about Heng Yi along the way. The people of Shishan village knew about a certain hunter named Heng Yi, but only the basics. No one really had anything to say about him, though, for two reasons. First, he was quiet, and second, he came and went in a hurry. He never talked to anyone. If someone greeted him or tried to make friends with him, he would nod and walk away. However, it was very surprising that he helped Xiao's niece bring the man to the previous morning. Today, Xiao and Sun Yiming were even more surprised that he was here. He wanted to sell pheasants to Xiao at a cheap price. Then he bought the stream fish they caught, and even invited Xiao to head his restaurant's kitchen. Uncle Yao, who wasn't lacking in worldly experience, could not help but suspect that this person had deeper intentions. First, he talked to Hang Yi about hunting, saying that he too wanted to go into the mountains to take a look. Hang Yi then said that he would set aside some time to accompany him. 
Uncle Yao was beginning to envy Hang Yi for opening a restaurant in the county seat. Is your wife managing it for you? I'm not married yet. The tavern is managed by my adopted brother, He Hong. When Hang Yi said this, he stole a glance in the direction of the carriage, but then quickly looked away. After Uncle Yao saw it, he instantly understood. No wonder he was so talkative all of a sudden. That restaurant earns quite a lot in a year, right? Uncle Yao asked curiously. It's all right. Hang Yi still didn't know how much the restaurant would earn in a year. He believed that He Hong was not the kind of person who would be calculative or scheme against him. At your age, even without the restaurant gig, you can earn quite a lot just by hunting alone. Why haven't you gotten married yet? I've gotten engaged twice, but the other party always breaks off the engagement. There's also no one I like, so I've dragged it out until now. Han Yi's voice was a little loud. Even Han Xiao, who was sitting beside the driver's seat, turned her head to look at him. Actually, Hang Yi was tall and strong. He looked like he had a lot of vigor. He hunted all year round, so he was very tan, but his looks were not bad moreover, he was quite warm. hearted There's no way he hadn't caught the eye of a few young ladies. Perhaps all those previous fiancés were afraid of that old shrew, Granny Hang. Considering that, it made sense for them to break off the engagement. Hang Yi remembered the advances he had made to attract the attention of Han Xiao. He would have laughed if it weren't so inappropriate. They were neighbors, and now she and Sun Yiming were estranged. She was with Hang Yi now. Wouldn't it be a little rude to declare victory so soon? Chapter 34 A Hunter's Heart is Hard to Gauge You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio Chapter 34 a hunter's heart is hard to gauge actually, Hang Yi had no such thoughts. Although he was a little taciturn, he wasn't stupid. He would be able to protect his wife. How could Han Xiao know what Uncle Yao and Hang Yi were thinking? She sat on the reins and calculated that when they arrived at the county town, she would have to go to the apothecary to take a look. What medicines were sold there? How were they supposed to be used? If possible, she would bring her three daughters to live in this town. She really didn't want to go back to Ningi town. When she arrived at Puai County, the sun was almost setting. Under the scorching sun, the entire Puai County was covered in a layer of golden light. After passing through the city gate, Han Xiao looked around. Puai County was much more prosperous than Ningi town. At that time of day, there were people carrying their own vegetables into the city. Along the way, they were shouting, vegetables. Get your vegetables. In addition, there were all kinds of people lugging things. They were rushing out of the city to return to their homes in the countryside. There were also people driving horse carriages, ox carts, donkey carts and mule carts. Hang Yi and Hong He's restaurant was some distance away from the city gate. When they arrived, He Hong was very surprised to see them. His eyes filled with surprise as he smiled. Brother Hang. Hang Yi gave a concise explanation for the purpose of his visit. He Hong greeted Uncle Yao and Han Xiao, then went in to sit for a while and drink some tea. He asked Bai Cha to bring the mountain goods to the kitchen and tidy them up first. Brother Hang, you should go wash up and change into clean clothes. Hang Yi glanced at himself. Indeed, his body was dirty and stained with the blood of wild boars. Okay. He Hong then ordered someone to prepare dinner, which was to be especially sumptuous that night. He then sat down to treat Uncle Yao to tea. You're too kind, manager. He Hong smiled and sized up Han Xiao. She looked outstanding but had her hair combed into a bun, so he didn't think much of her. In addition, since her uncle had accompanied her into town, he really didn't have much to say about her. Hang Yi quickly washed and changed into a set of clean clothes. It was said that a person depended on clothes just as a horse depended on a saddle. After he changed his clothes, his bearing was completely different. There was an indescribable feeling to it. Han Xiao glanced at him, then looked away. 
Her gaze was clear and gentle. She had no thoughts that were untoward. In fact, she didn't have any thoughts at all. Bai Cha said that he had finished preparing the fish, so he asked Han Xiao to come over and give him some pointers on cooking. Han Xiao got up and followed Bai Cha to the kitchen. Heng Yi took the opportunity to serve tea. Secretly, he was watching Han Xiao from behind her back. He hid himself well. However, Uncle Yao, who had been watching him all along, knew what he was up to. On the way to the kitchen, Han Xiao ran into He Hong's wife, Zhao Huanyang. The old woman behind Zhao Huanyang was holding a baby in her arms. When Zhao Huanyang saw Han Xiao, she frowned slightly and asked Bai Cha, who is this? Her eyes were full of vigilance. She kept her eyes glued to Han Xiao. Madam, this is Sister Dadin Dot La Han. She came with Mr. Hung to give some pointers to the chef on how to make fried fish. Brother Hung is here. Zhao Huanyang asked again. Yes. Zhao Huanyang waved her hand and told Bai Cha to take Han Xiao away. She then went to the living room. She was wondering why Hung Yi was here. She had been married to Hong for three years. Now their child was almost one year old, but she had only seen Heng Yi twice. The first time was when Heng Yi came to her and Hong's wedding, and other time was the baby's one-month-old birthday why had he suddenly come today. Zhao Huanyang was puzzled. She took the child and asked the old woman to go to the kitchen to give some instructions. She would cook a few more good dishes and then go to the cellar to get a jar of good wine. She carried the child into the little hall. Huan Yang, you're back. Come and greet Brother Hang. He Hong stood up with a smile. He took his chubby son He Cheng and bounced him around. The child laughed out loud. Zhao Huan Yang smiled and went forward to greet Hang Yi. Greetings, brother. Sister Dutton Dot Law, there's no need to be so formal. After Hang Yi said that, he introduced Uncle Yao. This is Uncle Han Yao. Greetings, Uncle Han Yao. Zhao Huanyang bowed again. There's no need to be so formal. Uncle Yao was a little embarrassed. After all, he was a country bumpkin, while she was the wife of a wealthy city man. Zhao Huanyang smiled and said, Brother Hang, Uncle Han Yao, you two take a seat first. I'll go to the kitchen to take care of the food. You go. Let Ching'er stay here with me, He Hong said. Zhao Huanyang agreed and left the room. Hang Yi looked at the lively and active He Cheng and revealed a rare look of affection. Big brother, do you want to hold Ching'er? The child hasn't seen you since his one-month-old birthday. I don't know how to hold children, so I won't hold him. Otherwise, I'll drop the child, Hang Yi said but he still squeezed He Cheng's chubby little hand in a rare show of affection. If there's someone you cherish, then hurry up and marry her. Have a child with her, He Hong teased. He forcefully stuffed the child into Hang Yi's arms. His body instantly stiffened. He hugged the child tightly, not daring to move. If you're willing, I'll help you find someone in town. Huan Yang has a cousin, and she told me that her looks and temperament are very good. Brother, do you want me to? There's no need. I have no plans to get married for the time being, Hang Yi rejected anxiously. He returned the child to He Hong. He was afraid that the child really would fall from his arms. He Hong hugged the child and laughed. He Ching also laughed. Hang Yi watched and felt envious. For the first time, he felt eager to get married and have a child. His eyes moved with his heart. He tried to look to the door without showing it. The doorway to the little hall was empty. There was nothing there. Only a faint sound could be heard, but he was very keen to catch its familiar ring. In the kitchen, Han Xiao was giving the chef a few casual pointers. The chef was learning very quickly. Soon, a few small fish were fried. The small fish were fried in pork oil. Since they were stream fish that grew up eating weeds without pollution, they were very delicious indeed. 
Zhao Huanyang stood at the side and said to the waiter, Go to the front and tell the customers that we are serving a plate of fried fish today. Yes, madam. The waiter immediately went out. There were only eight crispy fried fish on the plate. It was definitely not enough for the customers who already had quite a bit of wine. They were going to want another plate along with some more wine. Although it looked like they had served a plate of fried fish, they had actually earned back the profits from other places. She had only just met her, but Han Xiao could already tell that the owner's wife was a clever, calculative person. She never bossed around the chef, nor was she ever overbearing. She didn't want the chef to think that she was trying to steal his cooking secrets, so after learning about fried fish, she left the kitchen. Zhao Huanyang was very polite to Han Xiao. Let's both go. All right. Han Xiao replied in a neither servile nor condescending manner. My husband's surname is He, and my mother's surname is Zhao, so I'm Zhao Huanyang. You can just call me Huanyang. I just left my husband. My surname is Han and my name is Xiao. Dot. Zhao Huanyang's heart skipped a beat. The woman Heng Yi brought back here with him, has had a divorce. She had only met Heng Yi twice. He was quiet and didn't seem like a very warm dot hearted person. Now, he had brought people to the restaurant. No matter how she thought about it, something about this was not right. However, Zhao Huanyang didn't say a word, nor did she reveal anything. Since you seem to be older than me, if you don't mind, is it all right if I call you Sister Chiao? I would be honored. During the meal, Zhao Huanyang noticed something else. Heng Yi was the first to sit beside Han Xiao, separating her from her uncle Yao. Dot. Zhao Huanyang's heart sank. Uncle Yao almost laughed out loud. Han Xiao was the only one who hadn't noticed. He Hong wholeheartedly welcomed Uncle Yao to drink and eat as much as he pleased. And, he personally poured wine for Uncle Yao and Heng Yi. Chapter 35 Marital Dispute You are listening at NovelFull.audio It is said that those involved in an incident have no idea what's happening, while those watching from the sidelines understand everything clearly. Heng Yi would occasionally glance at Han Xiao. Han Xiao could feel his eyes on her, but she didn't think too much about it. After dinner, since it was said that nights in Puai County were very beautiful, Uncle Yao suggested taking Han Xiao out for a walk. Han Yi thought about it. He said he wanted to buy something, so they planned to go together. Dot. Dot. Han Xiao and He Hong were puzzled. What did a bachelor like him have to buy? Uncle Yao turned his head away and endured their stares with some difficulty. Zhao Huanyang, on the other hand, was panicking. He Hong was no fool. He might have been oblivious to the first few subtle clues, but Heng Yi's repeated odd behavior made him suspicious. Brother, let me know what you want to buy. I'll ask Bai Cha to buy it. We haven't seen each other for a long time. Let's sit down and talk. All right. Heng Yi casually said that he wanted to buy some golden sore medicine. Bai Cha immediately agreed. He told Heng Yi that Jimintang's golden sore medicine was the best. After handing over the money at the counter, he happily followed Han Xiao and Uncle Yao out. Bai Cha was amicable and very smart. He spoke with humor and had good taste. He brought Han Xiao and Uncle Yao up to speed on the local customs of Puai County. He also told them which shops were the best to do business with. Those few good shops were about to close and move locations. Which shop had the cheapest and most durable cloth? Han Xiao felt that this Bai Cha was quite a useful guy. Back at the Iha restaurant, He Hong invited Heng Yi into his study room to chat. Heng Yi could not read. His mind was blank as he looked at the books on the study's walls. I wrote these books, each and every one of them. It's a pity that you can't read, He Hong sighed. He then asked Heng Yi, why did you come into town today? Is there something you need? Yes, there is something. Heng Yi did not beat around the bush and said straightforwardly, 
I came here to take my earnings from these past years. I plan to buy a small courtyard in the county capital as well as one in Ningi town. Then I will be getting married. He Hong was stunned at first, but then he became happy. You're in a relationship. Which young lady has caught your eye, brother? When do you plan to propose? When the wedding date has been set, tell Bai Cha. I'll take care of some things for you. Hun Yi's usually cold expression gradually softened. He said somewhat shyly, she still doesn't about my feelings. For now, I'm not gonna tell her. Dot. He Hong looked at Hun Yi. Do you really like her that much? Hun Yi didn't say anything. He looked at He Hong silently. He Hong asked softly, it's not that Miss Han Xiao, is it? Hun Yi's face instantly flushed red. He hummed shyly. Dot. He Hong stood up in shock. He walked a few rounds in the study. But she's dressed like a married woman, she. She and her husband have divorced, and she's bringing her three daughters back to her mother's house to live. Hun Yi didn't mention that Han Xiao had just that day gotten a divorce. The other day's incident had really got his heart spinning. After that, he thought it over for two nights. He only decided to escort Han Xiao to the county capital when he found out that Sun Yiming's reason for going to Shishan village was to settle the divorce. Dot. He Hong stared at Hang Yi for a long while before sighing. You don't see that every day. Sitting next to Hang Yi, he said seriously, these past three years, our business has been pretty good. Not counting the first year's earnings, after deducting all the expenses from last year and the year before, the profit is more than 1,600 tails. According to our deal, each of us will get 800 tails of silver. Also, we bought the goods you sent in from the wilderness at a value lower than the market price. That comes to 150 tails of silver a year and 300 tails of silver in two years. This year's profit hasn't been calculated yet. I'll give you a total of 1,100 tails of silver. Just give me 1,000 tails. Set aside the other 100 tails for Chang'er to buy a couple mu of land someday. Well, thank you, brother. He Hong didn't stand on ceremony with Hang Yi. When he had first bought this restaurant, Hang Yi had just killed two tigers in a row. He entered business so that he, who was completely penniless at the time, could have a place to stay. His main responsibility was managing the restaurant. Hang Yi was in charge of bringing in meat, for which he was paid. After He Hong got married, he ate, drank and lived in the restaurant. Rather than having a monthly salary, he simply divided up the earnings at the end of each year. This gave him a huge advantage. Brother, please wait a moment. I'll go get the silver for you. All right. He Hong happily got up and returned to the main room. When he entered, he found Zhao Huanyang fondling the child. He opened the wardrobe and pulled out a drawer which held the key. He then went to open another wardrobe. Zhao Huanyang hurriedly asked, Boss, what are you doing? I'm giving Heng Yi his silver. Zhao Huanyang stood up. What? Why are you taking silver all of a sudden? How much are you giving him? Naturally, it's his earnings for the past two years. The earnings for the first year brother Hang said he was giving to Cheng'e as a gift. For the last two years, his earnings come to a total of 1,100 tails. Though, he also said to set aside 100 tails so that Cheng'e can buy land someday, so he just needs to take 1,000 tails. He Hong opened the wardrobe and went to open the big box at the bottom. Zhao Huanyang went forward and held his hand. Boss, I, I. Dot. He Hong frowned. Suddenly, he asked, have you touched the silver in the box? I, I, I just. Zhao Huanyang anxiously wanted to explain. He Hong opened her up and said coldly, I told you not to touch the silver in this box. From the moment we got married, we derived all of our livelihood from this restaurant. We took advantage of that fact. Every year I give you every penny of the earnings, and yet I don't see you buying any expensive items. 
we have no shortage of silver. Furthermore, when we got married, I said that only half of this restaurant belongs to me. The other half belongs to Brotherheim. The building deed and land deed also belong to Brotherheim. Brotherheim hasn't needed much money these past few years. He trusts me and asked me to hold on to the money temporarily. Fine, take out as much as you want. But don't blame me if it ends up costing you any of your dignity. He hung opened the box and took out a small brocade case. One thousand tails of silver was a lot, so he decided to exchange it for silver notes. The brocade case may have been light, but it was very valuable. I, I. Zhao Huanyang could not even finish her words. He hung opened the brocade case, but it was empty. Where are the silver notes? He hung asked in a deep voice. I, I, dot, pa. He hung gave Zhao Huanyang a hard slap. Zhao Huanyang screamed and fell to the ground. Tears streamed down her face, but she felt she shouldn't panic. Zhao Huanyang, if you don't bring back the banknotes today, then you can go straight back to the Zhao house. I will divorce you. They had been married for three years, and He Hong had been a very dutiful husband. Every year, after the earnings had been divided up, his share went straight to Zhao Huanyang. She could spend it however she wanted. However, she knew well that Han Yi's portion couldn't be touched. Zhao Huanyang was scared out of her wits. I, I took it back to my mother's house. Then go straight to the Zhao house and get it for me. Now. If you don't, I'll see you at the government office tomorrow. You, I just can't stand you. After He Hong said that, he stormed out of the room. Standing under the eaves, his face was filled with shame. He then saw Hang Yi standing at the entrance to the main courtyard. He rushed forward. Brother Hang. Brother Hang, I've let you down. If you have something to say, say it properly. Don't raise your fists to your wife. This isn't something a man should do. Hang Yi could hear the sound of weeping coming from the room. His face showed his disapproval. With eyes and ears as sharp as his, it wasn't hard for him to overhear their argument. She took the silver to the Zhao family. He Hong's eyes were red. Then you can go to the Zhao family to get the silver back. But you shouldn't have hit her. Hang Yi patted He Hong's shoulder. While you're at it, take care of this year's accounts as well. After saying that, he turned around and walked out. He Hong stood where he was. His entire body felt as if he had fallen into a frozen cave. He quickly turned around and returned to the house. He took out the key to open another wardrobe, then took out another brocade case. There were only a few pieces of silver inside. Ha! He Hong laughed. Chapter 36 Three years older you are listening at novel full dot audio. He Hong, I, I. Zhao Huanyang crawled forward and clung to He Hong's leg. I'm going to mother's house right now. I'm going to get the silver back. I'll go with you, Huanyang. If you don't get the silver, you really won't be coming back here. He Hong reached out to help her up and even wiped the tears from the corner of her eyes. I've been treating you quite well these past few years. Where do you put me by treating me like this? You didn't just take away the silver. You also took away our relationship as husband and wife, as well as my dignity, my personality, my moral character, and my trust for you. I was wrong. Dear, I was wrong, dear. He Hong didn't speak. He called the old woman in to take care of Chang'er, who had woken up from the shock, and ordered people to prepare a carriage to go to the Zhao house. Zhao Huanyang was crying as she sat at the side in a panic. Hang Yi left the restaurant and walked towards Jimintang, looking for Han Xiao and the others. They all just happened to be at Jimintang. They were buying golden sore medicine and summer dot cooling pills with Bai Cha. Han Xiao took the opportunity to ask if they wanted any dried herbs. Dried herbs, such as withered grass, calamus, and the like. Yes, but these things are cheap. 
They're very cumbersome to pick up, so no one usually messes with them. We don't mind the trouble. As long as you collect them here, we'll send them over when they're dry, Han Xiao said quickly. Things like withered grass and calamus were everywhere. In one trip you could bring back a couple tens of caddies, but when dried that same amount would only weigh a few caddies. Dried grass will go for seven coins a caddy, and calamus will go for six. All right. They could dry ten caddies a day, which meant they could make enough money to buy salt and sugar. The children were willing to go fetch it. To Han Xiao, even a few coins was a lot. Mr. Hung, Bai Cha called out enthusiastically. Yes. Hung Yi nodded and entered the hall. He was big and tall, so he felt a little crowded when he entered the apothecary. Shopkeeper, how much is that wild ginseng? The ones with more than ten leaves. More than ten leaves. The shopkeeper's eyes instantly lit up. More than ten leaves must be at least a hundred years old. The minimum price is a hundred tails. If the quality is good, it will be more expensive, and if the roots aren't injured, it will be even more expensive. Hang Yi acknowledged, I found one in the mountain, but I can't tell its age. Plus, I wasn't digging for ginseng, so I didn't want to do anything with it. Then, I'll send someone to follow you. If the ginseng really is over a hundred years old, then how does a hundred tales of silver sound? Han Xiao, Uncle Yao, and Bai Cha looked at Hang Yi enviously. A hundred tails. He was too lucky. Actually, a hundred and fifty tails, regardless of whether it's over a hundred years old or not, and regardless of its appearance. I want you to help me dig up some small clusters on the side and give them to me. The shopkeeper at Jimintang was no fool. Normally, ginseng would grow in small clusters. Large clusters would be a hundred years old or more. Okay, dot he immediately gave his assent. Hang Yi and the shopkeeper agreed to set out the next day. After leaving the Jimintang, Bai Cha asked Hang Yi, Master Hang, are you still going hunting tomorrow? Can I follow you into the mountains to broaden my experience? Sure. Hang Yi agreed, then asked Uncle Yao, Uncle Yao, do you want to come along too? Yes. Uncle Yao immediately agreed. When passing by the cloth store, Han Xiao stopped for a moment. She thought about going in, but ended up not. She decided then that the next time she came to the county capital to sell herbs, she would see if she could also buy some rags and to make bed sheets and quilts with. New sauls for her shoes would also be good. She could go out and pick some random flowers and grass to supplement the cloth. That would also make it look very nice. Nighttime in Kwai County was very lively. There were stalls selling all kinds of things, and none was lacking in customers. There were lanterns hanging everywhere. These oil.fueled lamps lit up the pitch.black night. The moon was half full and the stars were twinkling. Even if they didn't buy anything from the stalls, the scene still made for a very pleasant walk. When He Hong and Zhao Huanyang made it to the Zhao house, the people there were extremely shocked. Zhao Huanyang's two brothers immediately jumped up. They pointed at He Hong and swore. He Hong didn't say a word. He just beat his two brothers dot in dot law into the dirt. I will be taking the silver today. If you don't give it to me, I will directly report this to the authorities. Zhao Huanyang raced over to her mother. She begged, Mother, please give me back the silver. I beg you. Of course, Mother Zhao could not bear to part with it. But she was more afraid of her sons getting beaten to a pulp by He Hong. He Hong's gaze was really fierce. It differed completely from his usual gentle bearing and coolness. He listened to Zhao Huanyang's every word. They had crossed the line. Go and get the silver for him, Father Zhao said in a dark voice. Then, he said to He Hong, Sun in dot law, Huanyang didn't mean anything by it. She just brought the silver back for her mother to hold on to temporarily. He Hong didn't say a word. Mother Zhao reluctantly took out a brocade case. She counted 2,300 tails. 
Zhao Huanyang asked anxiously, Mother, didn't I give you three thousand tails? Where did the other seven hundred tails go? Zhao Huanyang's eyes were filled with horror. She looked at He Hong in panic. He Hong ignored her, took the brocade case and walked out. Zhao Huanyang tried to detain him. Huan Yang, a woman obeys her father at home, and after marriage, she obeys her husband. A daughter, once married off, is like spilt milk. You have forgotten who you are and whose wife you are. What happened to the remaining seven hundred tails is your family's business. It is your and your mother's business. I will not tolerate a family thief like you. I will get someone to deliver the divorce papers tomorrow. He Hong. Sun. In. Law. Dear. He Hong strode out. Zhao Huan Yang stood where she was and fell limp to the ground. Huan Yang. He Hong stopped in his tracks, but he hardened his heart and walked out. There was no way he was actually going to divorce his wife. After all, he had loved her as soon as he set his eyes on her. However, he wouldn't tolerate her touching the money that rightfully belonged to Heng Yi. She'd touched the money even before it had been divided up. They were the ones who had earned it, so it ought to belong to them. She could use it however she wanted. She could give it to whomever she wanted. She could respect whomever she wanted. He wanted Zhao Huanyang to remember that he would cherish her like a precious jewel, but if she stepped out of line, he would not let her off lightly. He Hong returned to the restaurant. Cheng Er was still crying loudly. He took his son and fondled him gently. Soon, he managed to get his son to stop crying. He asked the old woman to cook some porridge for him to eat before he put the baby to sleep. Cheng Er, however, had other plans. He wanted to look for his mother. Your mother has done something wrong. Cheng Er, we want to be good. We aren't going to be like mother. How could a child understand such things? After crying for a long time and eating his fill, he groaned in his father's arms. After a while, his eyelids drooped and he was fast asleep. He hung carefully placed his son on the bed and called for the old woman to guard him while he went to the guest room to wait for Heng Yi. He stood under the eaves. He looked tall, but his shoulders were already drooping. When Heng Yi returned, he was in a good mood. The reason for that was, on the way back, Han Xiao had a few words with him. She asked if there was a lot of ginseng that could be found out in the mountains. She also asked if he would show her where the ginseng was, so that, when the time came for her to go into the mountains on her own, she would at least know a thing or two. This is exactly the kind of thing Han Xiao was clever at pulling off. Although Han Xiao was born and raised in Shishan village, she had never found any ginseng in the mountains. She'd never even seen ginseng even after she married Sun Yiming. It was impossible for her to just know about it all of a sudden. Therefore, Hang Yi would make a great shield. Hang Yi had no idea, though. He felt that he stood out from the rest in Han Xiao's eyes. But he also made sure to carefully hide his thoughts. He was afraid of startling others. When he saw He Hong looking like that, Hang Yi frowned slightly. Bai Cha, take Uncle Yao and Sister Chiao to the guest house to rest. Yes, according to age, Han Xiao was three years older than Hang Yi. Chapter 37 The plan fails you are listening at novel full dot audio. Hang Yi took a few steps forward and handed the brocade case to He Hong. Is it really worth this? Hang Yi said softly. He pressed his hand to the case and pushed towards He Hong. If you can't give me the money, I still won't blame you. Why are you forcing yourself like this? Hang Yi said again. He Hong, don't force yourself too hard. Although I'm a little poor, it doesn't matter to me if I have this thousand tails of silver or not. As long as I have the will to earn money, I can come up with other ways. He had been making trips into the mountains for more than ten years. It was not difficult for him to find some precious herbs. With his strength, he could single dot handedly take down a tiger or even a bear. All these years, he never really had anything to struggle for. 
he didn't even know what he could accomplish if he did struggle. He ate when he had food, and starved when he didn't. Then there came the day Han Xiao smiled at him. He saw a woman's face for the first time. And so suddenly. He had thoughts that he shouldn't have. But he never really wanted to earn a ton of money. But now Han Xiao was divorced, and it seemed that she valued money very much. Suddenly, he was enlightened. He remembered that he still had a sum of money with He Hong in the county capital. Brother Hung, I. He Hong, don't forget that your wife is the woman you cherished enough to marry. She's the one you fell in love with. You spent many anxious nights just so that you could be with her every day. You must have known that she would make mistakes, so you shouldn't let her bear the responsibility alone. And I definitely don't blame you. He Hong was He Hong, and Zhao Huanyang was Zhao Huanyang. It was just like how he valued Cheng Er so much that he was willing to give him some of his silver. It was just a few things. You're an educated man. You know more than me. He patted He Hong on the shoulder. Just give me a thousand tails. It's fine. Brother. He Hong was extremely ashamed. Hang Yi was quiet and taciturn, but he was actually very open dot minded. He understood life, death and money very well. If he said it was fine, then he meant it. Why don't you go to the study? All right. After entering the study, He Hong began counting out the banknotes. He handed 1,000 taels of silver to Hang Yi. Then he began to calculate that year's increase. From January to the end of June, business had been very good. Every month they made 200 taels of silver. Apart from the chef, the waiters, and gifts for the officials, there was also their family expenses to take into account. That brought the actual monthly income down to 130 taels. Hang Yi's monthly delivery of mountain goods cost 12 taels of silver, so there were still 708 tails left. He hung silently heaved a sigh of relief. He understood that the remaining few hundred tails of silver didn't belong to him at all. Brother Hang, I've decided to buy a house and move out. In the future, I won't have to rely on the restaurant for food and drink. So for this year's profits, we'll split it early. Do you think that's possible? Sure. He Hong counted 350 tails of silver and gave it to Hang Yi. Hang Yi took the silver and stood up. Don't let your imagination run wild. Get some rest. You still have to make peace with your wife. If she's in the wrong, then talk to her nicely. Don't hit her. Remember, she gave birth to Cheng Er for you. Okay. When Hang Yi returned to the guest house, he saw Han Xiao talking to Uncle Yao. She said that she also wanted to go into the mountains with him and Hang Yi. Uncle Yao objected, you won't be able to keep up with us. Those mountains behind Shishan village how many fellows do you think head out there every year? Forget about hundred year dot old ginseng, even a few sprouts will soon be dug up and taken. Those hundred. Year. Old ginsengs must be incredibly deep out in the mountains and forests to survive that long. Han Xiao thought about it carefully. She decided that Uncle Yao's words made sense. Indeed, it wouldn't be suitable for her to go into the mountains. It'd be better to pluck the withered grass around the village and scavenge for calamus in the stream. If she really wanted to go deep into the mountains and forests, she would have to tell Hang Yi privately after she moved. She didn't want to worry her family. That mountain ginseng does indeed grow deep in mountains and forests. There are many ferocious beasts out there, too. As long as she makes suitable preparations, if Sister Chiao wants to go, it wouldn't be entirely impossible, Hang Yi said calmly. Uncle Yao snorted. This kid. After returning from the apothecary, he had deliberately said that Han Xiao was three years older than him. He didn't seem to mind this at all, though, because then he started casually calling her sister Chiao. Han Xiao's eyes lit up when she heard this, but she quickly rejected him. Maybe next time. That's fine, dot Uncle Yao excused himself and went to the toilet, saying he had a stomach ache. 
Han Xiao was about to return to her room to sleep when Han Yi said, Sister Xiao, can I trouble you with something? What is it? I want to buy a few feet of fabric. Can I trouble you to make a few sets of clothes for me? I'll pay you. Han Xiao smiled. The good things just kept coming that night. Can't you go out to buy some? The clothes in the ready.made clothing stores are not durable and easily come untangled. Han Xiao was considering telling him to ask his mother or Mrs. Zhao. Then she remembered all the incidents she had heard next door. All right, but I won't return the extra cloth. Also, it's going to cost you. No worries. Hang Yi was very straightforward. Han Xiao had been busy all day and was very tired. She casually told Hang Yi goodnight, then went back to the guest room to sleep. Hang Yi returned to his room, laid down on the bed and smiled. He was in a particularly good mood. He had never felt like this before. He woke up in the middle of the night, very anxious. When Sun Yiming wrote the letter of divorce and Han Xiao signed her signature, an indescribable feeling had welled up in his heart. He knew that after experiencing a failed marriage, Han Xiao would definitely not remarry easily. Therefore, he wanted to show her that he was worth marrying. When it came time to marry again, he wanted to be at the top of her list. After that, he went to sleep. Someone knocked on the door of the restaurant. Bai Cha hurriedly went to He Hong. Manager, someone from your wife's family said that your wife is pregnant. She's been sick lately. Dot. He Hong fell silent. After a while, he said, Bai Cha, go there and tell her that she can have the child if she wants it. If she doesn't want it, then she can do whatever. Bai Cha was stunned. He didn't understand at all. What was going on? Shouldn't a shopkeeper want as many kids as possible? Shopkeeper. Go on. Bai Cha had no choice. All he could do was rush out make a trip to the Zhao house personally. At the Zhao house, Zhao Huanyang was leaning against the headboard of the bed, tears falling like rain. Her eyes were glued to the door. She knew that he hung valued children. For the child's sake, he was bound to forgive her. However, when she saw Bai Cha, her eyes suddenly darkened. Suddenly, she cried out, Mother, return the seven hundred tails to me immediately. Otherwise, I'll hang myself from the beam above the entrance. Dot. Dot. The Zhao family and Bai Cha were stunned. After Zhao Huanyang roared, she slowly calmed down. She knew that the days when she was wrapped in He Hong's love may be gone forever. And that was in spite of Cheng Er and the new child that was on the way. The rift between them was large indeed. Even if they reconciled, it would not be the same as before. Tears suddenly fell again. She looked at her own mother with hatred. It's all your fault, it's all your fault. But she hated herself for being stupid. The good days were over. Now, she had to give way to her parents' urging. Mother Zhao was so angry that her heart burned. How could she have known that this was going to happen? Who knew that Hang Yi would suddenly come to the county capital and ask for silver? They all had thought Hang Yi would be a bachelor for the rest of his life. They thought that the silver would all be given to Ching Er sooner or later, and that he was just bringing some over for him in advance. Chapter 38 Hidden Excitement You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. It was the crack of dawn, and the restaurant was just starting to get busy. Some fellows went out to buy vegetables, while the chef lit a fire and boiled water in preparation for breakfast. After breakfast, Heng Yi, Han Xiao, and the others boarded a carriage driven by Bai He and went back to Shishan village. Han Xiao remembered to buy silk flowers for the children. One silk flower cost five cash. Han Xiao counted up all the nieces in the house. There were 30.2 in total. To get one for each of them, she negotiated a price of four cash per flower. After paying, they carried them out of the shop. Uncle Yao looked at them disapprovingly and said, You're spending money again. I promised to buy the kids some flowers. 
one silk flower for each of them. The colors were all different, and so were the styles. She would allow them to pick whatever color they wanted. Uncle Yao looked at Han Xiao. He felt that this niece of his was completely different from before. She was tough and magnanimous. She knew how to persevere, but also how to be grateful. She was pretty good. They returned to Shishan village. Uncle Yao called a few of his strong nephews. They went with him and Hang Yi into the mountains. Jim and Tang also sent five people who were good at digging ginseng to follow him. If they encountered any good medicinal herbs on the way, they wouldn't let them go. Han Xiao called her nieces over to distribute the silk flowers. She let them choose whatever flower they wanted. One girl had never seen such a beautiful silk flower before. Picking one of them, she said, overjoyed, thank you, auntie. Thank you, auntie Chiao. Han Xiao watched as so many people followed Hang Yi into the mountains. She was envious, but she didn't say anything rash. She told the children that they could sell dried grass for seven coins a caddy after it was washed and dried, and Calamus would go for six a caddy. The children were glad to hear that there was money to be made. To them, a few cash was an astronomical amount. If they could dry enough to make two or three caddies a day, they would be set for an entire month. If they kept it up for an entire year, they would make even more. But they also understood that they couldn't do such work every day. They still had to do housework, take care of their younger siblings, and feed the pigs. A few of them were intending to call it a day. There weren't very many children who could actually go out and collect herbs. Moreover, there was only so much dried grass and calamus in the vicinity. How much would they actually come back with? They were hoping their auntie would treat them again. Auntie, we'll collect some and give them to you. Auntie, if I find some, I'll give it to you, too. Han Xiao laughed. All right. I'll treat you all to some candy when the time comes. After she had finished passing out the rest of the flowers, Han Xiao went to work. There was a lot of work to be done at the new house. Han Xiao had just learned from Father Han that Uncle Yao brought his cousins to the mountains to find a few good trees and carry them back to use as beams for her house. Mother. Lady Han Yuan looked at her and smiled. Aren't you touched? Yes. Only today did I realize how good my uncles are to me. Your grandparents did a very good job raising their children, especially your grandmother. She's a very smart old lady. If she came from a better background, then our household would have some more money, and your father, uncle and the others wouldn't be cooped up in this ravine. Han Yuan was very emotional. Back then, their horizons were very shallow, so when their youngest brother was saving up money to go into business, they were hesitant. With a moment of hesitation, they wanted to go out for the rest of their lives. They didn't have the courage and missed a good opportunity. Han Xiao acknowledged that and gently hugged Han Yuan's shoulder. Mother, our family will not stay in this ravine forever. Han Yuan smiled. Heading out into the mountains was easier said than done. She didn't dare to imagine that she would ever be able to do so in this lifetime. The sky was almost dark before Hang Yi and his men came down the mountain. Uncle Yao and the others were carrying some big logs down the mountain. They also had killed some wild boars. The faces of the people from Jimintang, who had gone to dig for ginseng, were all rosy. It was obvious that they had found what they were looking for. Before they left, they said to Hang Yi, you can bring those little ginsengs in your hands to Jimintang whenever you want to sell them. Okay. Goodbye. Following Uncle Yao's instructions, the boar meat was split among the family. Since the weather was hot, they decided to bring a lot of it over to Han Xiao's house to cook. Father Han readily agreed. A few uncles had come over to help. The aunties, too, rushed over to help. They didn't come empty. Handed, each was carrying some grain with them. After all, with a big family coming over, they were going to need a lot of food. Uncle Yao invited Hang Yi to stay for dinner. Hang Yi nodded. He looked at Han Xiao, who was busy in the crowd. 
Hein Yi quickly averted his gaze and pretended to look at something else. He slaughtered a pig, cooked some rice, steamed some buns with coarse grains, cooked a few pumpkins and fried cucumbers. After the food was brought to the table, the children ate heartily. The adults drank some wine and chatted happily. Han Daolong stayed at Heng Yi's side. The house has been cleaned. We've already smoked out the mosquitoes. All right, thank you for the trouble. Out of everyone in the entire Han family, only Uncle Yao could tell what Heng Yi was thinking at that moment. He smiled and touched his face. He went home happily. Aunt Yao couldn't help but ask him, Why are you smiling? You wouldn't understand. She sighed. I say, old Han. When Uncle Yao saw that his wife was about to lose her temper, he pacified her, I can't tell you about this right now. When it's over, I'll tell you. I definitely won't hide it from you. What's so mysterious about it? Uncle Yao gave her a mysterious smile, then said, our old Han family might be in luck. By the grace of the gods. Meanwhile at the Han house, Han Xiao was sitting in the yard to cool off, having just gotten out of the bath. The children were already in their room, exchanging silk flower outfits with each other. They were careful not to ruin the flowers. Han Yi soon came out of the bath. He was wearing Han Daolong's clothes, which were a little tight. Father Han called him over to the side to talk. Is hunting in the mountains dangerous? Father Han asked. Yes, when you run into fierce beasts, such as wolves, lions, tigers, leopards and bears, you'll understand what I mean. Have you ever had a run-in with one before? Father Han asked curiously. I've killed two tigers and two bears, but I had helpers. Generally, it was not easy to find tigers and bears. They only would appear if you went really deep into the mountains and forests. They rarely would go down the mountain and enter the village. Dot humans were afraid of tigers, but tigers were afraid of fireworks. Hang Yi liked to chat with Father Han. As they chatted, Father Han asked, Are you married? How many children do you have? I'm not married yet. Dot. Father Han was surprised. That shouldn't be. You've killed a tiger. You must have earned a fortune for that. Why aren't you married? I got engaged twice, but the other party would always break off the engagement. I've yet to meet anyone suitable for me. Oh. Father Han wondered if any of the girls in his home would be suitable for Heng Yi. If he did, he would let Heng Yi know. Father Han wasn't even considering Han Xiao. It wasn't that his daughter was bad, but he felt that since Heng Yi had never been married before, he wouldn't fall for Han Xiao. He didn't want him to embarrass himself. Why don't you let my brother's wife keep an eye out for you? Han Yi was ecstatic when he heard that. However, he was afraid that the person he wanted to marry was not the same person Father Han had in mind, so he hurriedly said, I don't want to get married for the time being. Why? Father Han asked in confusion. I want to wait until I have a house. I can't make a lady follow me when I don't even have a place to stay. After Hang Yi said that, he looked in Han Xiao's direction. He couldn't see Han Xiao's expression clearly in the darkness. All he could see were her bright eyes. She seemed to be looking at him as well. Han Xiao was indeed looking at Hang Yi. She didn't expect to hear those words come out of his mouth. He was quite a responsible man. However, she was puzzled. Granny Hung was so fierce and irrational. How did she give birth to a son like him? Chapter 39 Move.in Preparations You are listening at Novel Full.audio No matter how you said it, Hang Yi was a familiar face in the Han household. He often took a few strong Han boys into the mountains to help him hunt and cut down trees. Whenever he killed wild animals, he would go home and have a feast for himself, then have Bai Cha to take the rest to the restaurant. All if it would count towards his earnings. Han Xiao was also very busy. She was walking all over the place, collecting withered grass and calamus. 
Once dried, she had by Cha take them to sell at Jimintang. She and her three daughters dried ten caddies of grass a day, but there was only so much withered grass during the summer. In two days, it would all be gone, and so would the calamus. Han Xiao was very brave. She took Sun Xiu and Sun Yi deep into the mountains. Apart from all kinds of herbs, they were lucky to find a wild pear. They picked it and took it home. Han Xiao spent some effort to make it into loquat leaf pear paste. She made enough to fill a huge jar. She also gave her uncle and aunt a small jar. Heng Yi, too, also received a jar. Han Xiao didn't sell the big jar of loquat leaf pear paste. She kept it for the children to drink when autumn and winter came. They painstakingly dug for herbs. All she found she sold for one or two tails of silver in total. However, only those close to her knew how hard they were working. It was clear enough from their tanned faces and coarse hands. But they never complained. For Sun Xiu and Sun Yi, the hard life brought with it much promise. Soon, their new house would be finished. They had already chosen a date, July 17 th, to hang the top beam and place the roof tiles. There were many people in the Han family. When the top beam was finally in place, they set off firecrackers, then started on the roof. Once the roof tiles were in place, they made the floor of the house flat and smooth with wooden blocks. It was bright and shiny. That day they also installed the doors and windows. In the front there were three buildings. The middle was the central hall, and the other two were side rooms. Because they were long enough, the two side rooms could be further divided into front and back rooms. The back room had a door to the kitchen, which was very convenient. The central room was the same. In the middle of the hall, there were small doors on the left and right. At the back of the hall, there was a door that led to the kitchen. That way one wouldn't have to circle around from the side room in order to get to the kitchen. The courtyard was set up according to Han Xiao's instructions. The main door led into a vegetable field. To the left, there was a stone road. The stone road extended along the wall of the yard to the side room and the kitchen in the backyard. A door was opened by the well to the woodshed. The main part of the woodshed was made of bamboo. Next to the woodshed were chicken and duck pens, which were circular and also made of bamboo. It looked safe, but it also prevented the chickens and ducks from escaping. In accordance with Han Xiao's request, two large beds were made, each 1.8 meters wide. She wanted to sleep on a new bed, and so did her children. There were two large wardrobes and a long table. They also needed bamboo chairs, bamboo baskets, bamboo baskets, baskets for rice dot washing, sun mats and cool mats. Han Xiao went to one of the ladies in her uncle's wife's household for those, since her father and brother were bamboo cutters. They were practically half dot buying and half dot giving, so she gave them a lot of small things that could be used at home in return. Father Han chose the date of Han Xiao's arrival by divination according to her birth date characters. The date chosen was the 25th of July. Han Xiao thought of inviting her relatives to lunch that day to celebrate her arrival. She also wanted to thank everyone for their help. Without them, her house would never have been built. The house was almost ready. Everything that needed to be moved in was moved in. The brand dot new building was finally beginning to look like a home. Although it was simple, it meant the four of them would finally have their own home. That day, Han Xiao was waiting for Heng Yi to return by the roadside. He came back with quite a bountiful harvest. From afar, he could see Han Xiao pacing back and forth at the intersection. Clearly, she was waiting for him. He quickened his pace. Heng Yi, Han Xiao called out softly. Her voice was gentle with joy and sweetness. Heng Yi felt that sweetness from the bottom of his heart. Emichim. Heng Yi responded, then casually placed his prey on the ground. He raised his hand and wiped the sweat off his face. However, his hands were dirty. After wiping the sweat off, 
a few black marks appeared on his face. Han Xiao passed him a handkerchief. Use this to wipe off. Dot. Hun Yi was stunned. He looked at Han Xiao again. Han Xiao, too, had been exposed to the wind and the sun quite a lot recently. She looked more tan, but also more healthy and energetic. Her hands were still very beautiful. No, no need. I don't want to dirty your handkerchief. It's fine. It's just a handkerchief. It was indeed just a handkerchief. She had cut it from the cotton cloth, which she normally used when wiping sweat and cleaning her hands. This color was light green. Since cutting it, she hadn't used it yet. If she had, then she wouldn't have been willing to give it to Heng Yi. Heng Yi hesitated for a moment, then took it and used it to wipe the sweat off his face. However, he didn't return it to Han Xiao. Instead, he changed the topic and asked Han Xiao, why were you looking for me? I'm moving in on the 25th. I was thinking of inviting the relatives over for lunch. Can I ask you to kill a wild boar and a dozen pheasants? Sure. I'll pay you when the time comes, Han Xiao hurried to add. She was afraid that Hang Yi would mistakenly believe she was trying to take advantage of him. Hang Yi shook his head and said, there will be no need for that. No, I have to pay you, Han Xiao hurriedly refused. I think you are misunderstanding me. I'll send you a wild boar, then when I come down the mountain, I'll have lunch with you before going home. Does that work? Dot. Han Xiao was puzzled. Hang Yi said again, I haven't eaten lunch or drunk any hot water all day. Bai Cha should bring me some, but after half a day it will already be cold. Cold water is really hard to swallow. Han Xiao was stunned. She thought of how difficult it was for him to go hunting in the mountains, but she never knew how tough he was. The temperature would be livable in summer and autumn. But in spring and winter, it would be very cold. She looked at the prey he had killed and his hunting tools. His hands were empty. Since they were already so familiar with each other and could be considered friends, it was really hard for her to say no. Sure, as long as you don't mind. Then it's settled. I'll kill a wild boar and pheasants for you on the 24th. Hang Yi picked up the prey and left. Han Xiao stood where she was and felt like something was wrong. For a moment, she couldn't pinpoint just what it was. She went back home and told Han Yuan about this. Just as she was about to tell her, Uncle Yao showed up. He chuckled. Uncle Yao, why are you laughing? Han Xiao asked. Nothing, nothing. Uncle Yao waved his hand and went into the central room to talk with his brothers. He wanted to see if they could take care of the wine for Han Xiao's move.in. Han Xiao originally prepared five tails of silver for this small courtyard, but she ended spending another three tails on it. It had turned out well, thankfully. You've been working hard these past few days, Father Han said seriously. That Han Xiao's courtyard had turned out so well for only eight tails was thanks to the four brothers, as well as all the nephews and grandsons. If it weren't for them, even an extra two tails may not have been enough. No need to be so formal, Uncle Han said with a smile. He was full of a sense of accomplishment. The small courtyard was spacious and bright. No matter how he looked at it, it looked good. He thought that once he saved enough money, he would build one just like this for his own sons. Living in a comfortable place with a woodshed and livestock was quite extravagant. Han Xiao came into the room with tea. She greeted her relatives one by one before finally sitting down. Father, uncle, second uncle, third uncle, and uncle Yao, on the 25th, I want everyone in the family to come to the new house. On the 23rd, Uncle Yao and I are going to the county capital to buy food. How can the whole family come? Just us adults will do, Uncle Han immediately retorted. He then said to Han Xiao, I know you still have some money, but you can't spend it like this. Uncle, I know what you said. Moving in is a joyous occasion. The children have helped a lot these past few days. 
they can just come over for lunch. It won't cost much. Uncle Han stared at Han Xiao for a moment and smiled, then we'll do as you say. Once we buy the food on the 23rd, we can discuss how to put together the banquet. Since it's your treat, you'll have to call on your aunts and great dot aunts. If they come, you'll have to start visiting them from now on. If they don't come, then I guess you won't have to. All right, I will do so. Chapter 40 Granny Hang's Wishful Thinking You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 40 Granny Hang's Wishful Thinking There Was Nothing Wrong With Her Uncle's Words. Now that she had returned to Shishan Village, she ought to start calling on all her aunts and cousins. As a junior member of the family, she ought to call on them first. This was not a special situation. She went over to invite them to the banquet. The reason they were willing to come was because they wanted to be close to their relatives and call on them. If they didn't come, that would be equivalent to breaking off their familial ties. If that happened, then in the future, regardless of whether the other party was rich or poor, they wouldn't want to visit them. Since she was going there to invite them, they would also be bringing their brothers. After some discussion, they decided to only invite the three aunts, who were Father Han's biological sisters. To avoid gossip, they wouldn't invite his cousins. The relatives wouldn't show up empty.handed. If they brought too much stuff, they would greatly begrudge parting with it all. But to bring too little would be rude. Some people may not be willing to come, especially considering that the impetus for this gathering was Han Xiao getting a divorce and moving back in with her parents. A daughter who was married off was like spilt milk she normally wouldn't come back. Her uncles and so on all had their differences, but since they all lived in the same village, it would be impossible for them to go about their lives without calling on each other. Ask your elder brother to go talk to the three aunts. At most, three or four people from their family will come. We'll need to prepare a table. Just in case, prepare two tables. Only those who work in the village will come. If their family has any troubles in the future, you'll have to go and help them. Han Xiao nodded. A few uncles came to help. Her cousins who could work also came. In the future, she would have to start calling on all of them. She understood the exchange of favors worked. They calculated that they would need more than twenty tables. Father Han's expression was solemn. They were going to need a ton of food. After the brothers left, he asked Han Xiao and her two brothers to stay behind. He also asked his daughters Dot and Dot Law and a few grandchildren to come over. Father Han took a purse from Han Yuan's hands, here is one tale of silver. Your mother and I made the decision to give it to you on behalf of your three brothers. Even though we're giving this to you, I don't want you to worry too much about our family's financial circumstances. In addition, we're giving you five hens that lay eggs, fifty eggs, a rooster, fifty caddies of corn, ten caddies of sorghum, ten caddies of soybeans, thirty pumpkins, two pieces of cured meat and a hundred caddies of sweet potatoes. Han Xiao's eyes turned red when she heard this. Considering the family's financial situation, it was really hard for her to accept all these things. Especially when her sister's dot in dot law didn't object. She stood up. Thank you, father and mother. Thank you, eldest brother and sister. In. Law. Thank you, second brother and second sister. In. Law. Thank you, youngest brother and third sister. In. Law. The three sisters. In. Law looked at each other. Then, the oldest said, In the future, lead a good life. If you need any hard work done, just shout. Our family doesn't have much money, but there are plenty of people who can work. All right. Han Xiao nodded. What surprised Han Xiao even more was that the uncles each gave her two hens, a piece of bacon, twenty caddies of corn, five caddies of soybeans, fifty caddies of sweet potatoes, ten pumpkins and twenty eggs. All these things had already been sent to her new house. She was told to get everything ready so that she could properly treat her relatives and friends on the 25th. Han Xiao was also discussing what dishes they would be serving with Han Yuan. Braised pork with soybeans, red pork, 
mushroom chicken soup, stir.fried bean sprouts, fried pumpkin, fried crisp meat, braised egg with minced meat, sweet and sour fish, with rice or steamed buns and some wine. Also, we'll make two plates of melon seeds and peanuts, and some stewed pig offal. Just as Han Xiao finished speaking, Han Yuan patted her twice on the shoulder. Did you burn through all that money? If you treat us this well, you won't be able to live any longer. Han Xiao laughed. Mother, I've already talked to Hang Yi about the pork and pheasant. We have eggs at home. We only need to buy fish, flour, rice and wine. Mother, my uncles and cousins have put in a lot of effort to build my new house. This will be the only meal that we can eat well. I can't be stingy at this time. If I do well, you and father will also feel proud. It's also worth considering that the uncles will be bringing stuff, too. Mother, don't worry. I will definitely get back to leading a good life. Han Xiao didn't mention that Sun Yiming had given her five tales after they divorced. It wasn't that she was deliberately hiding it. It was just that the fewer people who knew about that kind of thing, the better. Han Yuan's heart ached for the food, but she also knew that Han Xiao's words were reasonable. Han Yi gave the prey to Bai Cha and returned to Ningyi town. He went to the broker's office. The manager there smiled when he saw Han Yi. You came at the right time. I wanted to tell you that I may have found a house for you to take a look at. Han Yi wanted to buy a house. It was hard to find a big one, but he also didn't want a small one. Too small, and you'd have a hard time getting a carriage to fit in it. The house next door to you, the former sun house, is for sale. It's twenty-two tails of silver. Hang Yi was silent. He remembered the handkerchief. He had been rubbing it all the way there. The manager of the broker's office said, the house next door to the sun's is also for sale. It's twenty-three tails of silver. If you have the money, you can buy the two courtyards together. Then you could connect the two courtyards and rebuild. The location wasn't bad. A carriage could enter and exit, and further the two courtyards could be merged into one. It would be very comfortable to live in. Help me negotiate. Hang Yi immediately made a decision. Then help me find someone who builds houses. I want to tear it all down and rebuild. Hang Yi took out a hundred tails of silver. The manager's eyes widened. Hang Yi said calmly, also, help me get a carriage as soon as possible. Those days it wasn't easy to get a horse. The first reason for that was that good horses were hard to find. The second, they were too expensive for most families to afford. The manager looked at Hang Yi. Are you planning to get married? Is there a girl you like? Did she propose to you? Dot. Hang Yi didn't say anything. The manager of the broker's office smiled and took the banknotes. Do your parents know how rich you are? Hang Yi raised his eyebrows. Can you just settle the matter, please? Yes, I, Hu Lao San, will handle things. Don't worry. Though, those two properties are so close to your parents' house. Are you sure you want them? Moreover, when your family eats meat, your mother might run out crying, saying that she doesn't have anything to eat. What if she criticizes your wife? Hang Yi hesitated when he heard that. Are there any other properties for sale? Ningyi town is only so big, and you're in such a hurry to buy. Just where are you looking to buy this house, anyway? Hu Lao San muttered. Then I'll just buy the land and start construction. Go smooth things over with the local officials. But don't tell them that I'm the buyer. Don't worry about it, as brothers, I promise to handle things properly for you. By the way, who's the lucky lady? Is she good dot looking? Not even your father is as talkative as you. Hang Yi got up and left the broker's office. Hu Lao San chased him out, then stood at the door, spitting a few times. He turned around and returned to the broker's office to tell his wife that he wouldn't be home for dinner that night. After tidying up, 
he went to the government office and waited for Lord Dian Bo to show up. He was going to treat him to dinner and bring the matter up then. While Hang Yi was passing a restaurant on his way home, he saw that Sun Yiming was treating his scoundrel friends to dinner and drinks. Even at this time, Hang Yi pursed his lips. He headed toward home. Hang Yi, Hang Yi. Sun Yiming ran out of the restaurant and called out to Hang Yi. Hang Yi turned around and looked at Sun Yiming. Do you want to have a drink together BVEC, no thank you. Hang Yi responded indifferently and quickly walked away. Sun Yiming looked at Hang Yi's back. He took a deep breath before turning around to return to the restaurant. When he got back, his friend laughed at him. Brother Sun, why are you still talking to an idiot like that? You're degrading yourself. Dot. Sun Yiming silently raised his wine glass and took a sip. Then he put it down and said to his friends, I'm going out to study tomorrow. I don't know when I'll be back. What he meant was that he wouldn't be returning to Ningi town. When Hang Yi got back home, he entered the house. Granny Hang immediately welcomed him with joy. Hang Yi, you're back. Come and take a look. I found a lady for you to marry. Hurry up and have a drink with her. Let's consummate the marriage tonight.